So in this video, I want to talk a little bit more about fishing and also the idea of using subframing, which is basically a concept of finding an element in the frame and using that element to frame another. So behind me, I have this beautiful antique shop. There's so many found objects to work with, but there's one thing that really caught my eye when I was looking at this. There's a really cool mirror. It's just in a really cool spot. This is the scene that I have in front of me here, and that's that mirror all the way in the distance. So I'm gonna switch over to my 2X. Now the mirror's becoming more prominent, and then I'm gonna switch over to my 3X. And it's in this position with my 3X view, with my telephoto, that I'm making that mirror more prominent. And you're already starting to see the potential, aren't you? And I just wait for someone to enter the frame and take the photo, just like that. And we get a really cool shot because we get a complex image. We get a foreground element that's reflecting both ways. So we're looking in one direction, but we're also capturing in the other direction. Now, I like this frame. You'll notice I don't put this in the middle. I want to keep this off center just a little bit to give me a little bit more energy in the final photo. And here's one other thing I'm starting to notice. I don't think the color actually helps here. So what I want to do is swipe up on the word photo, drag to the left, click on that filter, and turn this into a black and white image. I really do want to pay more close attention to the background at this point. If I move to the left here, for me, it's not necessarily as interesting a background as if I move to the right because I get more layers in the shot when I do. So I'm just going to stand here and wait. So I think we got some really interesting photos here, especially that last one. I absolutely love that one. But I wanna try something a little bit different too. I wanna to get on the other side of this and maybe shoot with a more wide angle. And if I get closer with a wider angle, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be able to fill a little bit more of the frame with that mirror and give me a larger or slightly larger field of view that I can use to get more of the subject and also give a little bit more context as to where I am in the process. So let's give it a shot. So there you have it, fishing at its finest. I found a really interesting scene. That's the first thing you want to do. Now the use of reflective surfaces here in a found object works so well because you have two dimensions. And it gives me a very non-aggressive approach to working and finding people in my frame and also using that mirror as a subframe, which is an added bonus. Perfect position, perfect composition, and with a little bit of patience, perfect timing as well. This video was a free preview of the Urban iPhone Photography online course. In this course, you'll discover everything you need to know to take stunning iPhone photos in a city environment. Whether you find yourself commuting to work or visiting a famous metropolis, you're going to know exactly what to do to capture the unique character of that city. I'll show you how to photograph stunning skylines, unique architecture, busy streets, and of course, the people who make up the soul of the city. If you'd like to learn more about taking pictures in a city environment, please take a look at the full version of my Urban iPhone Photography course. You'll find that link in the description right next to this video. So click on that link right now and I'll see you inside the full version of the course.